To begin this video, I have a document that I've created that I'm going to provide to you so that you can follow along with this video because this is very important. Now, the thing is, is that this document looks like it's empty. However, there's a little spec over here in the upper left hand corner, and I want to go ahead and investigate this spec. So, if I were to hold down the Z key on the keyboard and I were to try to come over here and zoom into this area, you'll see instead that I go into the center of the document. This is not what I want, so I'm going to come over here to File. I'm coming down to Preferences, and I'm going to come over here and choose from the general, the Canvas Zoom at Cursor, and say OK. Once I've done that, if I come over here and I do the same thing, hold down the Z key, and I go ahead and click and drag, you can see that I'm able to zoom right into that point. And this is something that's very advantageous for doing a quick zoom, because it's actually very difficult to get to where we want to be when we're in these extreme zooms like what we can see here. The next thing I want to do is I want to come over here to this eyedropper icon that you see here and click that. This is going to take us into the pick color tool. You can see that we have two rings around our cursor. And the idea of these two rings is that they're telling us information. The inner ring is telling us the color that we're currently hovering over. So if I come over here and I hover over the blue pixel, you can see I'm getting blue. If I hover over the red, I'm getting red. If I hover over the black, I'm getting black. And if I go anywhere out here, I'm going to be showing black. And the reason why is because that was the last layer that we were hovering over. We'll understand that in just one second. The outer ring is going to be the currently selected color, which you can see right now is yellow. So if I were to come over here right now and come down and click on the blue pixel like so, what you'll see is the top part of that outer ring has changed and now it's blue and you can see that the currently selected color is blue. The reason why we still have yellow at the bottom is because we can switch back to our previous color by simply hitting the escape key. When we do that, you can see we get rid of the blue and we're back to our yellow. So we can try again until we get the color that we want and we can keep hitting escape until we get exactly what it is that we're looking for and we have the color that we're trying to choose. Now the options over here are going to be mixed color, exactly the same type of mixed color as we saw over here with the color sets. So if you like to use that, then you can certainly use that by simply enabling it here. The next set of options down here is going to be the sample. So we could sample the current layer only, we could sample all layers or all layers plus canvas. So let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick. So the current layer right now is the blue layer. If I turn that on and off, you can see it's just a blue pixel. You can see I also have a red layer and you can see I have a black layer. So the idea here is that currently we're working with the blue layer. So if I hover over the blue and then I go anywhere in that layer where there are no other pixels, you can see that I'm only getting blue. The reason why is because this is currently only paying attention to the blue. If I switch to the red, I hover over red. Anywhere else I go in that layer, doesn't matter what other colors I hover over, as long as there's only red pixels there, I will only be getting the red because I'm sampling only the current layer. However, if I switch over here to all layers, it doesn't care what layer I'm on. It's going to sample the information from all the layers, as you can see as I hover over these guys. And then the final option is going to be all layers plus canvas. So now when I go over the canvas, you can see I'm getting white. Whereas as soon as I go over the other colors on the layers, you can see that I'm getting those colors. Below this, we have the sample size. So the first sample size is going to be one pixel. This blue information that we have right here is exactly one pixel big. So you can see as soon as I switch off of that pixel, I'm going to be getting the colors that are relevant for the others. And you can see I don't need to move very far in order to get those differences in colors. This is the reason why you probably don't want to use the one pixel more often than not is because Within a document, you can have very rapid color shifts like this, and it may be that what you're looking for is the general overall color of the area. So you probably want to switch to an averaging mode like a three by three pixels here. Three pixels would be the size of this red square here. So three pixels across, three pixels down, that's three pixels by three pixels. If I hover over the blue, you can see that I'm going to be primarily getting a red color. The reason why is because it's averaging all this information out. And you can see here that we have quite a bit more red pixels than we do blue pixels. If I hover over the red pixel here, you can see we're getting an average between the black, the red, and the blue. And if I hover over the black here on the corner, you can see we're getting an average between the white of the canvas, the black, as well as the red. And so you can see how this averaging works. And you can also see how important it is to choose the right type of sample type. So here, if I hover over that same pixel, you can see now I'm getting a reddish black. The reason why is because it's ignoring the white of that canvas. The final option down here is going to be five by five pixels. And here, it's going to be averaging five pixels across by five pixels down. If I hover over that blue pixel, you can see that primarily what we're getting is a reddish black. And there again, the reason why is because it's averaging out and it has more black and red pixels than it does blue pixels. 
If I move over, you can see that gradually I'm going to be getting more and more black because it's primarily going to be focusing on the black information and not on the red and blue information because we have more black information out here. So the averaging of these guys is something I tend to leave at a three by three pixel because I find that that is going to give me the type of results that I find to be most useful. And if I just come over here and click on this, you can see that, yes, we definitely have a red black. And again, remember, hit escape if you want to go ahead and try again until you get the color that you're looking for. And then the other thing that I want to talk about for a second, and I'll just go ahead and hit escape again, is the idea that we can use this same tool on reference images as well as working on our preview. So if I come over here to window and I come down to preview and I go ahead and maximize this real quick, you can see there's our dot. And if I just come over here and I click on that dot and then I come back over here and I set this back down to a small size, you can see that I've actually got a black color. The reason why is because when I clicked on that, I was getting the black color. So these settings here are going to have an impact on what you get when you click over in the preview or when you're working in your reference image. So definitely something that's important to understand. I'm gonna go ahead and close that out for right now. And again, if you don't like the color that you currently have selected, you can simply hit the escape key and you'll be back to the currently selected color until you find exactly what it is that you're attempting to get. Now, the final thing that I wanna talk about real quick, and I'll just come back over here and I'll go ahead and set this to the fit on screen, is if we're in the process of painting, say watercolor or whatever tool we're using, Coming over here and clicking on this guy to enter into this tool is really not ideal. So the better workflow is to stay in the document with the tool that you're currently painting with and then to find the Alt key on your keyboard and simply press it and hold it. And as we're pressing and holding, we'll be in the Pick Color tool with all the options that you can see over here and we'll be able to do the same things that we were doing before. So if I come over here and I click, you can see I've got my picked color. If I let go of the Alt key, I'm back in my watercolor brush and I'm ready to paint. I never had to come over here and click this. I never had to come over here and click this. That is definitely the better workflow for using the pick color tool.